On December 20th, 2022, UN Security Council had a meeting to discuss the latest aggression on Armenia by Azerbaijan. One of the main talking points of this meeting was the ongoing blockade of the Lachin Corridor, effectively cutting off Nagorno-Karabakh from the outside world and resulting in a situation on the verge of a humanitarian crisis, primarily due to the shortage of food and medical supplies. Sitting through this entire meeting is a mind-numbingly tedious endeavor full of deep concerns and urging both sides to return to dialogue. I don't encourage anybody without masochistic tendencies to undertake it. So I went ahead and watched it nine times to bring you the best highlights. The UN Security Council is comprised of 15 members, 5 permanent and 10 non-permanent. All 15 members gave an address, many of them calling on Azerbaijan to end the blockade. This was followed by Azerbaijan spending a minute and a half complaining about the usage of the word Nagorno-Karabakh because they like to erase this name from existence. What Armenia and some council members erroneously called Nagorno-Karabakh is now the Karabakh economic region or in a short equivalent, the Karabakh region. Therefore, any country that mentioned Nagorno-Karabakh by name shall be awarded bonus points. The reigning champion, France, was the first country to take the stage and immediately called for the unconditional resumption of movement through the Lachin Corridor and as a bonus mentioned upholding the rights of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh. Day day, France calls for the unconditional resumption of movement and supplies through the corridor to Nagorno-Karabakh, whilst fully upholding the rights of the inhabitants. France used the term Nagorno-Karabakh four times throughout their address. A tier. Second to take the stage was the United Arab Emirates. They briefly mentioned ensuring safety and movement through the Lachin Corridor, but did not mention who was at fault. We echo the Secretary General's 14 December statement on ensuring freedom and security of movement along the Lachin Corridor, in line with the 9 November 2020 trilateral statement. D. Albania recognized the importance of ensuring freedom and security of movement through the corridor, but said this agreement should be respected by both sides, which makes no sense. Albania seemed to repeat the term both sides way too many times, which, in a conflict where one side has the other under a blockade, was just confusing to me. We recognize the importance to ensure freedom and security of movement along the corridor, in line with the previous agreements reached between the two countries. These agreements should be respected and implemented from both sides. That both sides are both by both sides. And both sides <clears throat> that both sides have expressed. E. China praised Russia's role in the region as having positive progress regarding the Latching Corridor. China expressed concern about the situation and said it should be resolved through dialogue. We believe the relevant disputes surrounding the Latching Corridor should be resolved through dialogue and consultations. Russia has done a lot of work to this end, with positive progress, which China welcomes. F. The United States called on Azerbaijan by name to restore free movement as soon as possible. He also said any attempt to cut off essential services to the people of Nagorno-Karabakh is unacceptable. As a bonus, he mentioned Nagorno-Karabakh twice and the OSCE as well, which is another thing Azerbaijan likes to erase. We call on the government of Azerbaijan and others responsible for the corridor security to restore free movement, including for humanitarian and commercial use, as soon as possible. Any attempt to cut off services essential to the civilian population of Nagorno-Karabakh is unacceptable. And for that, the United States gets an A+. Russia is concerned by the information on the blocking of the corridor. To their credit, they used the term Nagorno-Karabakh twice, but then went on to toot their own horn about all the work they're doing since the corridor is under their control. They also claimed that thanks to their efforts, the road was partially open to traffic, which is just not true. Control of the Russian peacekeeping contingent, which remains a guarantor of stability in the region and is carrying out its objectives effectively. 
As a result of this work, we managed to obtain the resumption of gas supply to Nagorno-Karabakh and the partial opening up of the Lachin corridor to traffic. F minus. The United Kingdom called for the immediate reopening of the corridor, very short and concise. But we continue to call for the immediate reopening of the corridor. B. Brazil said any obstruction of the corridor, regardless of pretext, jeopardizes the well-being of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh. Any obstructions, regardless of the pretext, jeopardize the well-being of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh. B as well. Kenya said they understand that the Lachin Corridor is critical for humanitarian access to Nagorno-Karabakh, which is a great start but then went on to urge both sides to cooperate in ensuring the freedom and security of movement along the corridor, which is again weird. Coin blockades along the Lachin Corridor, which we understand is critical for humanitarian access to Nakono Karabakh region. E plus, the plus is for mentioning Nagorno Karabakh. Mexico called the blocking of movement worrisome and called for free movement to be allowed along the whole corridor. If blockages to movements of people and vehicles continue are all very worrisome. We therefore call for free movement to be allowed along the whole corridor. A decent attempt. D. Norway called on Azerbaijan to guarantee safe movement along the Latin corridor mentioned Nagorno-Karabakh and encouraged more international involvement, saying the international community cannot just hope the situation will go away. In particular, we call on Azerbaijan to guarantee safe movement along the Lachin Corridor. The international community cannot just weather the storm in the hope that it will just go away. Norway gets an A. Kana went on way too long about de-escalation and dialogue without naming the aggressor, which had me questioning whether she was even briefed about the situation when suddenly she made a comeback by quoting the agreement paragraph 6 regarding the Latin corridor, then called on the international community to play a role in resolving the nagorno karabakh conflict and mentioned the OSCE Minsk group. All sides must ensure the consistent implementation of their responsibilities in accordance with the terms of the trilateral statement of 9 November 2020, including the terms of paragraph 6 relating to the Latin Corridor. The international community must also play a role in facilitating negotiations geared towards the complete resolution of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. We remain supportive of ongoing international mediatory efforts by the Russian peacekeeping force, as well as engagements by the European Union Council, the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs, and the CSTO. C+. Ireland said without the freedom of movement through the vital Latin corridor, the people of Nagorno-Karabakh would face a man-made humanitarian crisis. He then called on Azerbaijani authorities to immediately and unconditionally restore freedom of movement along the Lachin Corridor. To top it off, he went on to say Ireland supports the settlement of the long-term status of Nagorno-Karabakh and supports the OSCE Minsk Group format. Without the free movement of people, goods, food and medical supplies through this vital corridor, the people of Nagorno-Karabakh will surely face a humanitarian crisis this winter. As Council, we must do everything we can to avoid this and to prevent another man-made catastrophe emerging on our watch. Ireland therefore calls on the Azerbaijani authorities to immediately and unconditionally restore freedom and security of movement along the Latin Corridor in line with the trilateral statement of 9 November 2020. Ireland supports a negotiated, comprehensive and sustainable settlement of the conflict, including on the long-term status of Angorno karabakh We maintain our full support to the international format of the OSE Minsk Group to pursue this objective. And that is why Ireland is the GOAT. S-tier. Gabon is concerned by the information about the closure of the Lachin Corridor and said the right to move through the corridor must be guaranteed, but did not name an aggressor. 
and then called on both parties to abide by the ceasefire and continue negotiations. We are concerned by the information received. Uh, they described the closure of the lodging corridor since the 12th of December, uh, something that could uh, result in a humanitarian crisis. The right to move through the corridor must absolutely be guaranteed. E. And lastly, India said the blockade has adverse effects on getting essential supplies to the people of Nagorno-Karabakh. India called for the freedom and security of movement along the corridor, but did not name an aggressor. The reports regarding a blockade of the Lachin corridor indicate adverse implications on the supply of essential items such as food and medicine to Nagorno-Karabakh. We join the Secretary General in calling for de-escalating tensions and to ensure freedom and security of movement along the corridor in line with the previously reached agreements. D. And there you have it. The winner of the UN Security Council 2022-688 is Ireland for checking all the boxes, calling for the immediate opening of the Lachin Corridor, calling out Azerbaijan by name, and bonus mentions of the status of Nagorno-Karabakh and the OSC immense group. And most importantly, not a single country defended Azerbaijan's medieval actions.